Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Building This City. This is Soap the Great. Now, I know it's been a little bit, been a couple of weeks since I've been on this server with you, but uh, I assure you that we have been getting some stuff done around here. And I wanted to show you a couple of builds, and I want that gas to be quiet. And it just seems odd with the volume down so low that he is so loud. Yes, okay. So the ghast is now a little bit quieter, but I wanted to show you um, a couple of builds. One of them was done by a fellow member of the server. In fact, this is the newest member of the server. His in-game name is Neon Waters, but uh, he is not afraid of having his name put on um, on here. He has given me permission. He just recently completed this huge build, and we're going to take a look at it and he calls it the Caleb Cloud and you will see why now um, he did start out with this being somewhat secretive and he had a nice little secret entrance that uh, nobody was supposed to know about but I do happen to do the overviewer maps for this seed or for this world and uh, so I I noticed when a new tunnel showed up on the map for the nether but uh, yeah he um, He's been working just pretty much non-stop on this thing, and uh, it starts with this little minecart system. So we're going to go down here, and I want to make sure that that's not too loud. Ambient environment, blocks, no, that's right, it's the player. And so there we go, we're at the end. And then there goes the minecart. Bye bye. So we're going to go through here. Oh, and it shows back up there. That's pretty cool. So we'll go through here, and you'll see why it's called the Caleb Cloud in just a moment. Once we get through. Okay. We are actually pretty high up over an ocean. I don't know if it is visible, yeah, just barely, with my chunk rendering. Yeah, so we're up over an ocean, and I will show you the coordinates now. We are at y equals 130, so it is actually at cloud level, and if I had clouds turned on, we would see them. But uh, let me show you some of the neat things here. We've got a little, little hot tub, there we go, and a nice little grill over there. Get out of the hot tub and turn the lights off there. Yeah, so lights on, lights off. It's pretty cool. Uh, over here, little swimming pool, nice little recreational area. Um, another another hot tub in case you don't want to share, I guess. Um, let's see, put some oars in and little farms and stuff. It's really quite nice got what looks like something from a bunch of different biomes here so let's go around here flowers and got a bar here and I'll show you the control room in just a moment let's go downstairs uh, yeah we'll go downstairs first um, I should have shown you that to begin with but we'll pop down here so if we go through here, this is the master suite. He's done a very nice job decorating in here. And he gave me the grand tour last night. We'll go through the emergency exit in a little bit. But first, we need to take a look at everything that's around here. That's the entrance. Little fountains. Very nice. Just, just well done. Great attention to detail. We'll see that in a little bit. But here's a kitchen and a little dining area and then we go over here what do we have here some oh this is some storage storage area that is the snow golem that generated all of the snow blocks here and you see he's using oh yeah here's something will it work there we go it just moves a solid block in place above it, which 
kills or uh, lets it go. So a uh, little enchanting setup. Very nice little living room. Just, just well done. Um, and then we come over here. We've already been through there. That's a decorated area. But the other thing here is some guest rooms. So if anybody was to come over, they'd have a nice little setup to start with. A bunch of different food items. So you can close that. Guest room. Guest room. Very nice. The emergency exit is this way. We're not going to go to that quite yet. We need to go back upstairs. And I need to show you the control room. And uh, that is pretty cool. So we come here. We're going to hit lighting. And we'll look over in that, that direction right there. And we see a little thing of lava dropping down. And then rain. And he calls this his lag machine. I guess I've got my own with that sorter. He's got his with the pistons that alternatively open and close and open and close. So we're gonna we're gonna shut that off just to read the amount of lag yeah frames per second is pretty terrible up here I'm gonna hit that again um, it's nothing nothing uh, too spectacular on the redstone it's just some a lot of uh, a lot of loops and uh, a lot of repeaters and stuff we'll hit that lighting and we can run down here real quick and see you know let's go out here Still learning my way around. I did just get the tour last night. So it comes down this way. I think that's it. And we will go downstairs to the... Um, do I have this right? No, I don't have this right. Go down here. I wonder if we can see it. So he's got it set up where that lava falls through a a window. Yeah, it goes through that thing. And so if you go to the emergency exit, we're going to do this. Oh no! So we'll go down here. And I've got a pretty good helmet on. So we're just going to go through. This is like the the piece de resistance. And what has he got? Oh, I see. Yeah, that's right. No. Where did he put that? Hmm. I'm missing something. Oh, it's uh, right in the middle. What am I missing here? No, still missing something. Hmm. Well, oh, there it is. So, you can see it a little bit. There we go. And so he just collects it down here, and it goes over top of that glass. It's, uh, it's a nice little feature. So anyway, he's been spending a lot of time on that, which is great. I'd love to see people having fun on the server, and he's done a great job here. But we're going to go back to the nether hub. Here, well, let's see, that's the exit. Here we go, get in there. And we'll head off here. Now he did have this tunnel cut through. And I was digging to go get some horses right along this path right here. And I actually knocked into it just a little bit. And uh, inadvertently found it. So, uh, so yeah, that is a nice little feature. So... Kudos to you, Caleb. That's a that's a really nice build, and I'm looking forward to what he's got planned next. He has officially declared that complete, and uh, 
he's got some some ideas going and we will see what that's all about so anyway I'm gonna take a quick commercial break and then after that uh, we recently had a naming ceremony so I'm gonna show you a little clip from that and then once we are done with that I will be back at my base and we'll get on to the next thing I'd like to show you. So, back in a bit. Hello, kitty. You want a name? I've got a name tag here. You ready? Hello, Zosimos. Nice to meet you. All right, that naming ceremony was a bit so anticlimactic, I admit. But hey, he does have a name now. So I chose Zosimos, and that is actually from a commenter by the username of Mog Swamp. Um, the the reason I chose Zosimos is because um, the comment was left on the Metallurgy the episode, the one where I did the gold farm above the iron farm. So uh, Zosimos was actually one of the earliest authors of alchemy textbooks um, apparently that uh, comes from Wikipedia um, I, I'm guessing because it has a citation needed annotation um, in the comment but thank you Mog Swamp for that suggestion and uh, to the rest of you it's time to name some other stuff now you see I've got a dog there and a dog there and I've got some more, I think, over that way, and I've got some more to where we're headed. Um, my goal here is to have two breeder dogs and two breeder cats, and I'm going to name those. And any additional dogs or cats will not get a name. They will get a water-breathing splash potion and a fire-resistant splash potion whenever they go with me. But, uh, hey, if you want to help out with the names of actually the name of one of the dogs I've got a name in mind for one of them already uh, feel free to leave that in the description below but as you can see I have gone a little bit further than the tunnel went because I'm gonna show you another build now initially I got to it through here but I've been working on this for quite some time you know what I don't even need this because of our, I should have it. You may be about to see me or witness a death. Nope, there we go. And here we go. This is actually a a, uh, a build I've been working on for about a I don't know a few days now. Um, as you can see over there, there is a spawner. And if you look down here, you see that particular configuration. And the fact that our channel here is two wide and one high, that should give you a clue. Real quick guess, if you want to leave that in the comments, you have five, four, three, two, one. Spider spawner. This is a spider spawner. Now, I know, I know, I've already built a spider grinder. This was before I knew what I was doing, and I was just following a tutorial from... Um, actually, X Dowsy, and uh, found him on Twitter recently. So, uh, anyway, it's good to get in touch with him. But now I know a little bit more, and so I decided to do one and put my own touches on it. And so here we go. Uh, let me show you the way it works. We're just going to hit that, and they show up almost immediately. Um, and I don't know about this. This this is kind of freaky how that works okay so that pops in we need a couple more just for it to really show up okay spider spawner do your thing there we go we got a couple um see sometimes they they climb up the glass I don't know why and you know if I jump up and down in front of it that tends to or it seems to knock them down. So let's go down here and see if we can encourage them to get in here. So you gotta wait a little bit for them to really start clipping into each other. Um, well, and once you get more, there we go. I think, yep, that'll almost do it. Almost. 
Almost. And one just succumbed to drowning. Maybe this will be it. Can we get them to clip into each other? Oh, I would really like them to do that so we can show you. Oh, but that's spiders for you. Let's see if we can just get a few more to fall down. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. A few more. I don't know. So anyway, the the other one works. You have to turn off the lights. Uh, so I've got that feature still going. And then you have to close the the area for the crusher. And then you actually have to hit the crusher. And the crusher itself is based on pre 1.5 redstone mechanics. Now we've got we got enough. We can show you this. Let's see if I can encourage these guys to pop down. Can I? No, no. Okay, so we got one. That's fine. Um, then what we do? So we got them all bunched up in there, and there we go. And so that thing is going to extend for just enough that these become one hit kills okay so we'll just pop around here and then close that and we're gonna throw that back in there wow I picked up two okay and then what we have is that carries the items off to an item elevator which is right back there and then they go into an item sorter and there we get our string and our spider eyes not that we need spider eyes because of the witch farm and then anything else and there we go that happens to fall in and uh, eventually I'm not gonna have the dogs down here and so it won't be a problem to use splash potions of harming two so we'll just fill this up and I've got an extra one great and then over here put this up because the way to get in is going to be through here and the way to get out is also going to be through here. I'm going to use an ender ascender but I haven't built that yet. I'm not going to build it on camera. I'm still got to decorate this thing but anyway so we've got uh, that bed is going to move. It's just there in case somebody else is on the server. Um, I'm kind of sheltered here. See the level is 26. So uh, if I happen to be on and somebody else is on and they need to sleep I've got a little bed down here just in case but here we go we've got the enchanting area and then a little little uh, area here for the splash potions of harming a uh, set of anvils here and of course the gotta have one of those so you can move stuff back and forth for easy enchanting and we don't really need this enchanting setup we don't need the XP grinder but I figured you know I do need a source of string that's a little bit closer to get to than the other spider farm and I wanted to try my hand out at some new redstone mechanics so we're actually going to take a look at that so real quick you see that chuck that on there and I'll show you that it's just piston and it's a hidden input or it will be once I put in carpet all along here but before I go down and show you the redstone hey guy um, before we do that what do you think so far of the design we still gotta finish some over here um, I just no that's wool I don't want wool I want clay uh, there we go and that and dark wood yep I, I just wanted to show you some of the stuff behind there before I fully closed this in I'm done with the clay spruce wood that was it okay I'll get that later but and I am just totally derping it up that's fine don't want to do that quite yet okay so what do you think of the design so far now I'm gonna have carpet down on here and some hidden lighting we're gonna get rid of the torches um, that's just to match you see that 
two blocks of clay over there, two there. Is that another spider? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I just haven't gotten it. That's fine. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the redstone. And do let me know what you think of the design here. Um, one thing in particular, if you could help me out, I think this looks too dark. So we got spruce wood and dark oak slabs. I like the texture difference, the little height difference there, but it just seems too dark. So um, let me know if you got any ideas for maybe highlighting that a little bit better. It's got to be with slabs because I really want to keep that relief there. But uh, yeah, do let me know. I appreciate your comments, questions, and suggestions. Um, so we come back here and we've got two ways to go. We can either go up or down. We'll go up first because there's fewer mechanics for that. Um, the hidden input I send up through a, uh, not a torch tower, it's a slab tower. Um, and we just invert the signal so when there is the, when that thing is on down below, this thing opens the door. And it is a Jeb door, so it's flush face. It's not fully hidden, but that's fine. This is purely for maintenance. The other piece, can I get to it, is over here. Um, and that is the button to turn on the farm. I wonder, yeah, I can get up here. Uh, where's my, there's my entrance. Okay, so this is a little bit expensive and it's probably overkill but I wanted to try something out for a future build that I'm going to do a little bit of hype there so pay attention to what's going on there but we've got a bunch of pistons and I extend a redstone block in between them and under here is another piston um, and redstone block that extends out to the redstone lamp that is above the spawner and all of those lamps happen to give enough light output to turn off the spawner or at least reduce it to where it's almost ineffective and does not produce any more spiders and let me show you what we've got here so the button is on the other side of that lamp I pull it out I pull the signal out from this um, what is that repeater and right here is a uh, pretty simple silent T flip flop so there's a dropper facing up and a dropper facing that way and you see a chest right there that chest is right above a hopper so when the signal comes in it's going to trigger w both of these droppers and whichever one happens to have the item in it just one um, and I don't really need a shovel because I'm putting a repeater right here but uh, but yeah, so I pull the signal out of here, and if the item is in here, and that means the signal is coming out, we uh, carry that all the way up, and that extends the pistons. And if that light is off, it means that the spawner is off, which oddly enough means that the lights in there are on. So light off here, lights on in there. Light on here, lights off in there, and I accomplish the that other piece by um, inverting the signal right here there's a little redstone torch um, so now let's see can I get down yes I can okay so if I was to go down that stairway to the back you'd see the other piece um, so real quick that hidden input you've got above this piston that extends a redstone block and that starts a little chain going all the way up that opens that door. The other thing here to note is um, there was that other lamp. I don't know if you can see it. No, because it is right in front of that piston. When that lamp turns on, that means the, uh, or when I turn on the, rather, uh, what's that on the front, a lever? It powers this piston, which extends this redstone block, which comes down, powers this redstone, which then goes around, and I power this uh, quick um, pulse shortener, 
And what that does is it kicks off. Uh, well, no, first of all, oh, I see. First, I carry the signal out, and that extends the these pistons right here. There's uh, another set on the other side, and that pushes some stairs out, which pops the spiders all up to where that piston can get them. And then we go around here, do a quick pulse here, and that unlocks a hopper timer. This is the Silent Hopper Timer by TT Sewer Minecraft. I love this thing. It's so easy to program, so e fairly easy to build as long as you have a decent supply of comparators. And what I've got is 19 pieces of dirt in there, and that's just enough time to get the spiders down to a one hit kill. So, what happens is that as the um, well, I invert the signal going into there there's a redstone torch on the other side there that powers that block which um, is currently unpowered and so when this thing turns off um, it means that the piston over there is going to be extended and it's going to go for however many seconds 19 requires to go across um, and I don't know that right off the top of my head but, uh, but there we go. So this is a lot simpler than the other design where I had something like 20 or 21 repeaters all at full delay going around in this huge circle. Um, this is not as compact as it probably could be, but I, as you can see, I have a little bit of room. I ran into a mine shaft network all around, so it was pretty much dug out for me already. So I just took my time with it or took my space but uh, there we go so uh, the things we still gotta do I think I've told you all that go down here I'm gonna take out all the torches and just use glowstone in the floor and cover it up my main goal is to make sure that over here is a light level of 8 or higher uh, preferably 8 at this point because that means that we are at 7 or below at that block and then I'm not sure how much stained glass drops down, but that makes sure that we don't get too much light leakage into there and our efficiency is a little bit better. And that's the other thing about the other spider spawner. The efficiency is low because the floor is actually too high. Okay, You need all the spiders to drop out of there as quick as possible. Get them out of the spawning range. And there's an area around here that is the spawning range. And then beyond that, there's an area where the spawner won't push out any new, um, new, new mobs if there are a certain amount within a larger range. Uh, does that make sense? I can post a link to mob spawner um, characteristics in the description below so you can see that a little bit better. But this makes sure that all the spiders get out of that range and don't clog up the system and so we get a fairly decent supply of them in a short amount of time again it's not the enderman farm it's not the blaze farm but you know if we're over here and we need some string we might as well get some xp off of it as well and uh, so that's what we got here so I've been working on that and uh, I'm still got a little bit to go. Um, maybe I'll show you that in the next episode, but I'm going to call it here. I think this has been going on for long enough. Hopefully you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to put a thumbs up on it. It helps people discover the channel, and uh, if you really enjoyed and you are not already subscribed, think about subscribing. I would love to have you along for the journey here as I learn more about this game, and... Uh, Hopefully, um, me learning about it, I'm able to also help you learn about it. If uh, And if you are learning stuff, do let me know in the comments. Um, love to hear from you. Comments, questions, suggestions. If you are seeing that I'm doing something that uh, I don't seem to be improving, I would love to hear about it. Constructive criticism is always welcome. And uh, love to hear from you otherwise. So that is it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed, um, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye.